got some breathing to do. Right. In the book of Mark, in the book of Mark, and I'm using this as a canvas to paint a picture on, on this morning, Mark chapter 8, beginning at verse number 22. And it says, they came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. And when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus said, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. And then, 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 then skip over real quick to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, very familiar passage of scripture. Verse number 8, it says simply, Love never fails. Just for a few moments, I just want to talk to you from this subject, the law of love. The law of love. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would speak to this broken vessel. Help me to encourage somebody's heart, somebody's mind, somebody's spirit, that they may be able to practice the law of love. In the name of Jesus, we pray and all of God's people said, Amen. Look at somebody real quick and just tell them, practice the love law. Yeah, you may be seated in the beauty of all of holiness. Ladies and gentlemen, almost thousand days ago, I had prepared a message, hoping and praying I would never have to preach it again. Within a few months, I had to pull out that same message and preach it again. And here we are now, 1,100 days later. I had to pull it out one more time. This time I had to do the 2.0 on it. Because the truth of the matter is, we've seen a lot of stuff in the past 1,100 days. Here in the United States alone, we have seen over 100 million confirmed cases of COVID-19 which includes over 1.2 million deaths. Right here in the United States, we saw 40 million people out of work. In the past 1,100 days, we saw our states and our cities fall into economic crisis. I mean, the gas prices soared to over $5. Don't go to the grocery store now for a dozen eggs. Y'all can talk back to me here. Businesses, government buildings, and even our churches have changed the way we operate. We look for smiles, but they were hidden behind face masks. <laughs> the embrace of a loved one or a simple touch, your neighbor turned into a six feet away wave uh, or an air high five. Over the past 1,100 days, Quincy, we saw a cough or a sneeze turn into public enemy number one. And while we isolated ourselves in our homes and coping and adjusting to this new normal, uh, a, a, a video went viral that was taken in front of a convenience store that rocked this nation. But we all witnessed the murder of a man named George Floyd. We 
watched as ex police officer Derek Chauvin kept his knee on George's neck for nine minutes, 29 seconds. Y'all remember that? Actually, two minutes and 53 seconds of it occurred after George had become unresponsive. And we listened to this 46-year-old African-American grown man cry out for his mama, saying, sir, I can't breathe. And in the aftermath of that senseless depravity, we saw protests against police brutality spring up in cities around the United States and abroad. And even right here in Buffalo, you would think someone would have an ounce of humanity. But instead, the mayor's response was a state of emergency and a curfew. The police response was to adorn themselves in combat gear, shooting rubber bullets, and releasing tear gas like they were at war with their own citizens. Y'all can talk back to me here. And when, in actuality, they were attacking unarmed citizens. And the picture that our eyes have seen has been surreal. I mean, governments deploying soldiers, declaring war against its own citizens, because of the inhumanity of a clique of rogue cops committing an act of gross recklessness with wanton indifference to the consequences and the peril. Uh, 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 the question we must ask ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, is can we really see what's going on? Uh, what, what, what's going on in our nation? What's going on in our state? What's going on in our cities? What's going on in our communities? What's going on right in our families? The question remains, do we clearly see, or are we like this blind man of the text, where we see people, but they look like walking trees? Uh, in other words, I... I see something moving, but is it human? Mm. Uh, for the life of me, Tammy, I, I, I'm trying to figure out how does taking an exam, spending 21 weeks in training, cloud your vision that you can't tell a human from a tree? Uh, how does a uniform and a badge affect your sight that you can't tell a human from a tree. Y'all, y'all help me. Y'all help me because y'all know I'm just a little slow. But, 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 but. So, so they gave you a gun and a taser and some pepper spray, and you forgot that the people you encounter every day are human. My God. <laughs> see, 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 see. If you read this story, the blind man was. Blind. The blind man encountered Jesus, and the first thing Jesus did was separate him from who and what he was familiar with. And one of the biggest problems we face in today's society is recidivism. For those who think that that's an eloquent word, it simply means repeated behavior. Uh, uh, we, we see it quite often with those who are recovering addicts. They come uh, to a place of acceptance. They surrender themselves to rehab. They successfully get sober. And once they are released, they go back to the same drunken family, hang out with the same crackhead friends. And soon and very soon, they're wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, and doped up. Uh, 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 we see it consistently in those individuals who have been incarcerated over and over again. The judge lock you up, you do your time, they let you out with what is termed gate money, which can range from $10 to $200, depending on where you live. Now, uh, only thing this person that has been freed is 
I'm free. But, 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 what are you going to do with $10? Amen, somebody. Heck, a pack of cigarettes cost 14 <laughs> uh, what, what, what you going where are you going to live with for two hundred dollars when the average rent is over eight hundred and fifty dollars uh, so so in order to survive Ruth, this is what they do they go back to the same place they got in trouble mm -hmm. hang out with the same people they got in trouble with mm -hmm. and soon or very soon they're wrapped up tied up tangled up and locked up uh, uh. Uh, 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 uh. And the same holds true. Yeah, I might as well go all the way here. There are some women at the well. Maybe not in here, but maybe you watching. <laughs> they in here, right? They they they, they with me right now. Uh huh. Uh, and you know exactly who you are because for some reason you can't live without a man. Uh, and you got five baby daddies, and the one you with is a married man. Oh, it's quiet in here. It's quiet in here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, little girl, little girl, you need to heed the words of Jesus. Go your way and sin no more. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Before you find yourself wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, and knocked up. Oh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and, and the same holds true in our the police departments. So because racists gravitate to racists. Bias gravitates to bias. Thugs gravitate to thugs. Because birds of a feather uh -huh, flock yeah, uh -huh, together. Just, just because you wear, you wear the same color uniform doesn't mean you have the same vision. Uh -huh. and some honestly want to make a change in their communities while others get great amusement out of being an egotistical narcissist with a touch of paranoid schizophrenia. The death, the death, the death of Michael Brown in Ferguson or Eric Garner in New York City or Tamir Rice in Cleveland or Breonna Taylor in Louisville, George Floyd in Minneapolis, and now we have to add another name, uh, uh, the murder of Ty uh, 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 Ty Tyree Nichols would have never happened, ladies and gentlemen, if they were to be seen as human beings. Look at somebody and tell them I'm a human being. I'm not, not a suspect, not a thug, not a criminal, not a minority, not a poor person, just a human being. Being. And if they would have saw a human being, absolutely, positively, none of this tomfoolery would have been going on. And I think Ezekiel said it best in chapter 12, verse 2. He says, uh, 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 Son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house, which has eyes to see, but does not see, and ears to hear, but does not hear, because they are a rebellious house. A rebellious person likes to challenge uh, authority. I was, I, I was, I was teasing Bishop uh, Boyd this morning, and I said, uh, somebody called me and said, you ain't coming to church this morning. I said, no, nah, he coming to church because he's rebellious. He looked at me, and he said, he said, I'm not rebellious. Uh, I said, yeah, they said that you were just a presser. I said, well, oppressor and a rebellious person is about the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because if I would have told him to stay home, his butt would still be in church. Yeah, yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, uh, they like to break rules. They even try to overthrow governments. Matter of fact, it's a part of the American fabric. For if the colonies hadn't been rebellious, uh, against England, there would have been no United States. And we saw it on January 6, 2021. A large group uh, of people blinded by the lies of Donald Trump. Uh huh. A man says, uh, 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 We can see it. And so they marched to the Capitol with blurry vision. All they saw was Congress, politicians, government press pause dummy 
every person in that building was not a title. They were a human being. Uh, what should have been a peaceful protest regarding the presidential election debate turned into wanton acts of destruction and violence and mayhem. And if they would have been able to see clearly, they would have saw they were on their way to jail. I know that's right. <laughs> uh, uh, the second thing Jesus did, mm, Mickey, was this. Jesus spit in his face and threw mud in his eyes. Wait a minute. One, I'm blind. Number two, you done took me away from my familiar place. I, I, I can't call Cousin Ray Ray and them because uh, you done took me away from my familiar people. And, and, and I can't go back because I don't know where I am. So now this blind man has only two choices. Cuss Jesus out or humble himself for help. Uh, people nowadays have a very strange way, Isaiah, of trying to get respect. Let me help you. Being flipped at the lip will not gain you respect. Amen, somebody. Uh, rolling your eyes, cocking your neck with your hand on your hip will not gain you respect. Cussing at folk uh, trying to pump them off will not gain you respect. Uh, saying I'm grown, yet having a temper tantrum like you a two-year-old will not gain you respect. Uh -huh. uh, only respect will beget respect. I want to prove it to you, so glad you asked. I can't plant an apple seed and expect oranges. Uh -huh. I can't make two dogs and expect a cat. And you can't be mean and nasty and expect me to be nice to you. Come on now. Years ago, years ago, years ago, uh, right now, um, I, 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 I wanted to make some cookies. And so what had happened was I was too lazy to go to the corner store and get some milk. So, 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 so I got my flour, I, I got my sugar, I got my butter, and I substituted the milk with water. Mm -hmm. uh, I put my little dough in the pan, and I got me some little maraschino cherries, and I put it in the middle. And oh, and I put it in the oven. About 15 minutes later, I looked in the oven. Oh, those cookies look so good. They were pretty. They were shining. I mean, they was, they, they looked good. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, you know, you, you can smell, you can smell the butter. You can smell the sugar. It, it just smelled good. It smelled like a cookie. It looked like a cookie until I bit into one and almost broke my tooth. Uh, because uh, they were harder than a rock. And the reason why is because I was missing one ingredient, and if you miss one ingredient, you can mess up the whole batch. Uh -huh. uh, and that's the same with respect. One missing ingredient will mess up a long-term relationship. One missing ingredient can break up a marriage. One missing ingredient will get you fired faster than you got hired. One missing ingredient will have you wonder why folks stop speaking to you and dealing with you. One missing ingredient will cause heinous murder of innocent victims by the hands of domestic abusers, rapers, and even thuggish cops. One missing ingredient will get you the disrespect you deserve and not the respect you desire. Paul said it this way, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and I don't have love, I'm just a sounding brass and a tinkling single uh, symbol. And for those of you who are lay people don't know what that means. In other words, if you don't show love, you ain't getting none. Amen, somebody. Uh, 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 as I, I, I watched the video, 
of those five cowards that beat and murdered Tyree Nichols. I began to scratch my head because the dialogue didn't make sense. You know, I know I'm a little slow, and I, I, I get that they wanted him to comply, or in other words, respect the order. But you yelling, get your blankety blank out the car, yet you already pulled him out the car. You yelling at him to get on the ground, press pause, dummy, you had already threw him on the ground. Uh huh. You, you wanted him to put his hands behind his back, but, but how could he if his partners was pulling his arms straight out? And, 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 and here's the most dumbest move I've ever seen. Because y'all know I love law and order. Y'all know I like them crime stories. You tell your partner to tase him, which means all y'all have to take your hands off of him, or all of y'all gonna get electrocuted. And now you mad at him for running for his life, and you can't run 300 feet without running out of breath. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, I, I might as well go all the way. Y'all pepper sprayed him at close range three times. He wiped it off and didn't say a word, but your partner pepper sprayed you, and you were sitting there crying like a baby. At the end of the day, Tyree still won because y'all are on your way to jail facing 60 years in prison while Tyree left this world for a better one, for the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, the third thing Jesus does for this blind man is tell him to go wash. And this denotes an act of obedience. What has puzzled me is how some of these nasty smelling people want to be all up in your face. Let me tell you a secret. Cologne nor perfume mixes well with funk. <laughs> Can I tell you another secret? The average cost of a bar of soap is $2.78. It will be the best investment you've ever made. And if we can just be real, some people think washing up is like dippity do, a little dab will do you. Uh, Y'all remember Ruth in the Bible? Naomi, her mother-in-law, had, had enough of Ruth walking around all depressed, not taking care of herself because she lost her husband. Ruth come home one day, and, and Naomi took one whiff of her, and she looked at her and she said, girl, go take a bath. You can't get no man funky. Come on, talk back to me up in here. Uh, Y'all remember Naaman, who had leprosy in the Bible? Here's this dude, got plenty of money, but walking around scratching and itching. Y'all remember the story. Y'all remember the story. Dude grabbed a bunch of money for his healing and took it to the prophet Elisha. And Elisha said, man, I don't want your money. I need you to go take a bath. Dip yourself seven times in the Jordan. Bruh, let me help you. You can have all the money in the world, but she ain't gonna be laying up with you and smell and you smelling loud, feet smelling loud, armpits smelling loud, breath smelling loud. Come on, ladies, help me here. Go take a bath. <laughs> and some of us <laughs> and some of us not only need to take a physical bath, but a mental bath, an emotional bath, and a spiritual bath too. 
Some of us need to wash our mind. The Bible teaches us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We need to wash our emotions. Because uh, any man that be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold all things. Because, and you need to wash your spirit. Because what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Ah, uh, the blind man makes the choice to be obedient and he goes and washes. And now he can see what he doesn't see clearly. And this seems to be the prevalent issue. I can see, but I still don't get it. For the opposite obedience of obedience is rebellion. And over the past 1,100 days, we saw thousands of people die every day at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Yet people were still out and about without masks, rebelling against stay-at-home orders, and with no regard for their family, their neighbors, or their community. But, but, but just, uh, uh, let's just be honest about this. We have to, we, 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 we've been dealing with this and watching rebelliousness for a long time. Because we got some children that have been disrespecting their parents, cussing out teachers, and frankly, they'll, 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 I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll go out at any adult. Have I got a church in here? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we, we got, we got and rebellious employees who ignore dress codes uh, and showing disregard for policies and procedures and failing to give proper attention to matters of great importance. We, we got rebellious leaders who disregard the warnings of the people they are to serve. And I find it very interesting. Anywhere there is authority, there's going to be someone that's going to rebel. Uh, and it's unfortunate, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the most egregious act is when we rebel against one simple command, to love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, uh, this command uh, dates back to God's uh, social justice laws that were dictated to Moses to give to the Israelites as easy as it sounds. Can you imagine how different this world would be if we could enforce the law of love? Uh, 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 in order to see clearly, this is the thing that Jesus had to do for this man. Because it was clear he couldn't see clearly. And so Jesus lays his hands on him. Uh, we know when Jesus lays his hands on us, now we've got love laid on us. Yeah, yeah. Because God so loved the world, yeah, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him should not perish but ha have everlasting Life. Love isn't passive or just thinking compassionate thoughts for others. It's an action word that requires action. Uh, in, in, in Luke chapter 10, you'll find Jesus telling the parable of the Good Samaritan in response to a young Lord's question, who is my neighbor? And the story is about a traveler who is stripped of his clothes. He's beaten. He's left half dead along the side of the road. And, and first the priest and then a Levite come by, and both of them avoid the man. And finally, the Samaritan happens upon the traveler. The story is told, uh, and you must understand the culture, Samaritan and Jews despised each other. Uh, but the Samaritan helps the injured man, and it's significant to note the person that Jesus commended was not the bishop, the pastor, the elder, the deacon. Uh huh. Uh, but wait a minute. Jesus commended the hated foreigner. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you must understand, ladies and gentlemen, the Jews viewed Samaritans as half breeds, both physically and spiritually. Samaritans and Jews practiced hostility, but Jesus 
asserted that love knows no nationality boundaries. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it, it was the hated, the despised, the rejected, the mistreated, the half-breed, the minority. Ooh, that word gets up under my skin. Ooh, God, it does. Uh, uh, let me tell you why. As somebody asked me why. Uh, uh, because to say that you are a minority means that you're less than a whole. We walking around, I'm in the minority. I'm a minority. No, I ain't. I'm a human. Come on, talk back to me here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Y'all let that, y'all let that marinate real quick. I don't know about you, but I'm not a half of nothing. I'm a whole man, a whole father, a whole preacher, a whole businessman. I'm a whole human. But don't you call me minority. Ain't nothing minor about me. Oh, I feel Jesse Jackson up in here. I am somebody. Foreigners showed more compassion and empathy and selfishness. But it was the preachers, Quincy. It was the preachers and the musicians. Yeah, it was. The preachers and the musicians that were no different than those who ascribed to white supremacy. Now, help me here. I'm slow. But if you're so supreme and so superior, why can't you stop passing people by, mitigating and deflecting? I mean, being disingenuous and oppressive. If you're so superior, stop calling me black. Don't call me indigenous. Don't call me a person of color. Call me a human. Amen, somebody. Uh, can we, uh, ask me why. Because I breathe like you. I bleed like you. I hurt like you. I walk like you. I communicate like you. And I will eventually die like you. It sounds like we all in this human thing together. And the same could be said about the police torture. Because I get it now, Tammy. I get it. The job is not to protect and serve. I got that. I got, I got that. The job is law enforcement. And just like the priests and the Levites, the police culture in our society would rather snub their nose at those they perceive as half-breeds than protect and serve the least of these. And I guess those rogue cowards with badges and guns forgot the oath they took at the beginning of their career. They said, on my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or public trust. I will always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable to, uh, for our actions, and I will always uphold the Constitution, my community, and the agency I serve and you know, I think they, I, they need to add like five more words. I will do no harm. For, for, for ladies and gentlemen, Romans chapter 13 states that love does no harm. It actually says that love never fails. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And once again, here we are, forced to really focus on law enforcement. And maybe, just maybe, the law we need to enforce is the law of love. Uh, you, you know the law that says, love your neighbor as yourself. If we enforce the law of love, we would have never had to see the brutal image of Emmett Till. If we enforced the law of love, we would have never witnessed the assassination of JFK, Robert Kennedy, or Martin Luther King. If we enforced the love law, we wouldn't have to hear the cry of Rodney King saying, can we all 
get along. Uh, 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 if we enforce the love law, we will never have to hear the words of India coming saying, uh, I'm dying while she is in the Erie County Holding Center with 72 deputies assigned to observe her and they literally doc uh, documented their deliberate indifference to her medical needs. If we enforce the love law, we will never have to watch another viral video where a 30-year-old driver by the name of Clinton Settles right here in Buffalo was repeatedly punched in the head on the ground to the point where his eye socket and his collarbone were broken. If we enforce the love law, we will never have to watch the tragic story of a 26-year-old emergency technician by the name of Breonna Taylor being struck eight times with bullets in her own home, uh, uh, all because of a nonsense called a no-knock warrant. Uh, if we enforce the love law, we won't have to add the names to the chant. Y'all hear it all the time. Remember the name. If we enforce the love law, we won't have to remember the name of Trayvon Martin or Eric Gardner or Michael Brown. If we enforce the love law, we would not have to remember Philando Castile, Sean Bell, or Armando Diallo. If we enforce the love law, we wouldn't have to remember uh, Freddie Gray, Tamir Rice, or Sandra Bland. If we enforce the love law, we wouldn't have to remember Walter Scott, George Floyd, and now Tyree Nichols. If we enforce the love law, we would find out that the truth is that faith, uh, hope, Love, the greatest of these is love. And I don't know about you, but I'm saddened, I'm sick, I'm angered, I'm frustrated, yet I'm hopeful because I know God opened my eyes because he gave me a, a savior that was falsely accused. He gave me a savior that was arrested. He gave me a savior that was brutalized by the Roman soldiers. He gave me a, a savior uh -huh, who went uh, to, from kangaroo court to kangaroo court. He gave me uh, a savior who was convicted uh, to die. He gave me a savior that carried the cross up the mountain uh, that they called the skull. He gave me uh, a savior that, that put two nails uh, in his hand, uh, two nails uh, in his feet, uh, 72 thorns uh, around his head uh, and pierced him uh, in the side. Uh, they gave me uh, a savior uh, where they hung him uh, in between uh, two thieves. Uh, and I found out uh, because I can see clearly uh, that even though uh, I may be in trouble, uh, I still uh, got a purpose uh, because my Savior uh, looked down uh, from that cross uh, and said, Father, forgive them uh, for they know not uh, what they do. Uh, he looked uh, over to a thief uh, and told him, uh, this day uh, thou shalt uh, be in paradise. Uh, he looked uh, down to his mother uh, and said, Mama, uh, take care of your son. Uh, son, uh, take care of your mother. Uh, Jesus uh, was on that cross uh, with nails uh, in his hands, uh, nails uh, in his feet, uh, 72 thorns. Uh, around his head. Uh, they pierced him uh, in the side uh, for one day, uh, one hour. Uh, that last hour, uh, he looked uh, up to God uh, and said, Father, uh, I commend uh, 
my spirit unto thee. Everybody thought he was dead. But oh, 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 early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. I can see clearly because I know the battle is not mine. It's the Lord. I can see clearly because I don't have to wait till the battle is over. I can shout right now. I've got victory. I've got victory. I've got victory. When I practice and enforce the love law, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but out of all of the love, the laws that we have, I find it very strange. No one wants to enforce that law. And I don't know about you, but I remember and I recall a story it was a slave trader. He was traveling in the boat. Slaves all in the bottom of the boat. All of a sudden, the ship hit a storm. He thought that the ship was going to sink. The ship did not die. And now everybody was on the ground. He looked towards heaven. He said, Lord, have mercy on us. While he was looking up towards heaven, he heard the slaves humming down at the bottom of the ship. The slaves didn't have any words to the song, and if they did have any words to the song, he wouldn't understood them no how. <coughs> and he heard the melody that they were just resonated in his spirit. When they passed through the storm and they got to shore, he called his boss, got in contact with his boss, and he said, I can't do this slave trading no more. I quit. The boss said, why are you quitting? We got money we got to make. And the man said, because I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. That slave trader was the writer of Amazing Grace, who finally found out he could see clearly that what life he was living and what he was doing was inhumane. To other people. And he wrote that, the words to that song that simply said, oh, 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 me. Zing grace. How, how sweet the, the sound that say a wretch like me the God I once was long but now I'm I'm found, I, I was blind, but now I, I see through me, need day, just hold.
was grace that brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me, me on. And I'm sure when they got to that shore, only thing they just said was praise God, praise God, yeah, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise, oh, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. One more time, come on, say, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Come on, lift those hands and just say, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, yeah, nonsense and the tomfoolery the foolishness of this world. You see it, but you don't get it. Today is a good day to see clearly. What do I need to see, Pastor? What do I need to see? You need to see that God loves you and that he cares. And that regardless of what you've done in your past, he can wipe that slate clean. There's one thing that he's never given us, and that is a rewind button on life. Only thing we can do is go forward. That's the only thing we can do. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday is gone. Ain't nothing you can do about that. But you can make tomorrow the best day of your life. Today the best day of your life. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock of you and hear my voice out. Come in and I'll sup with you and you with me. Today is a good day to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Father, we bless you and we thank you for this opportunity and this privilege to come into your house and to learn that there is a law that's greater than any law, and that's the law of love. 
Lord, I help you. Well, I ask that you right now stir up our love gift so that we may be able to share love with our neighbors and our friends, that we may be able to express love and kindness to every person that we meet. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. Help us, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Praise God. 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 Come on, let's put our hands together for the word of it. Enforce that love law. Enforce the love of best thing that you could ever do. No man knows the day nor the hour when we leave it here. We can have all the best plans in the world. And the truth of the matter is you don't have really know the appointments you have with God. So the best thing you can do is love on people while you got the chance. I thought about all of the people, all of the people last year friends of mine, close friends of mine that I've been friends with 20 and 30 years. They're all gone. Because you don't know when. You don't know when. You don't know when. If you got family members that you don't fell out with, get over it. Somebody shout get over it. <laughs> Life is too short. Next thing you know, you're going to be trying to jump in the casket with them. You can't go with them. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it with those family members and those friends. You ain't got to hang out with them every day, and trust me, you, you ain't even got to deal with them half the time. Just call, call it, say, hey, I called to check on you. Oh, thank you very much, and then hang up. Amen. And those people who you've been mad with for 20 or 30 years, and you don't even know, you can't even remember what you're mad about with them, get over it. Get over it. There's a season when sometimes you have to you have to erase their name out of your phone and replace it. And this is what you do, especially people who get on your nerves. You ready for this? Okay. Keep the number because you may you may need to call them, right? Just erase their name and put nonsense. So that when they call, it'll tell you nonsense. <laughs> And when you get over it, you can move on to the next stage of your life. It's a wonderful problem to have when you can love people. You ain't got to like them all the time. Did you hear me back then? You ain't got to like them all the time. Amen. But you should love them. All right, it's time for our tithes and our offerings. Well, man, I'm not sure he does. He does it in tithes and offerings. I want to, again, <coughs> thank each and every one of you for being so supportive of this ministry. We're a little piece of leather, but we will put together. Yeah. We'll, oh, yeah. And I love it. And I love it, too, because that, it, it, that shows us that God is faithful. Shows us that God is really, really faithful. And you just think about it. I think about it all the time. 22 years ago, in January of 2001, we ain't had nothing. Nothing. We were in a hotel room. Eating breakfast, worshiping God. Look at us now. 22 years later, we didn't have three buildings in 22 years. This one is paid for in full. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Just trying to figure out how we was going to pay the mortgage. 
especially when, the, when, when we had to close down for COVID. We raised more money during COVID than we did during the whole time and paid off the mortgage while we were closed. That's God. That's God right there. And then you think about, amen, we were praying. When we, remember, we were raising that money for the roof. Amen. That, that, amen. That money came right on through. Amen. Got the roof done. And now we want to start working on the sanctuary. We thank God for, amen, <coughs> the Department of Transportation, because we got our basement done. Amen. And, and so, praise the Lord. Amen. Every time I turn around, there'll be, there'll be some nice checks. We don't get little checks. We get big, fat, juicy checks. I, I thank God for it, too. Amen. The man called me. Uh, and I was, uh, honestly, Ruth, I'm serious. I'll let you go, because I know you got to go. But I, I got to tell you this. I was sitting in my chair at the house. And I was saying, Lord, we need some money. We need some money, money. And the very next day, uh, someone called on the church line. And the man said, hi, um, do you have any space for rent? And I said, I might. What you want it for? He wanted for an office. I said, I, I think I can accommodate for that. He said, okay, I'm going to pass it on to my, to, to my co-worker. So, maybe about a half hour later, Eric called. Eric said, we want to use space in the church for the expressway project. And I said, really? I said, wonder. And he said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pay you a year in advance. I heard it up and said, okay. <laughs> and and, and, and so, so you, you just don't know that when you're faithful over a few things, and God will make you rule over many. The only thing you got to do is just be faithful. And uh, so, as we get ready to now, we got blessed. How much we pay for that stuff, Daniel? Thirteen. You forget? I know. I know. We got four thousand dollars worth. Of, it was four thousand dollars worth of material that we got for. I think it was like twelve hundred bucks. Amen. A amen. Amen. And so, all of the, all of the, uh, what do you call it, Jay? Huh? And the middle grid, we already have all the supplies for that. And so, what we need now, of course, is to continue <coughs> throughout the course of this year, amen, to get the outer grid, and then, of course, the panels that go inside, and, and then we got to figure out a way to handle it so it don't fall down. Amen. A amen, somebody. Amen. And, and we don't have to go up there where the birds and the bats are. You know, right now. <laughs> I, I was telling Rodney about this time I went up there. I don't know what I was up there for. I opened up the door, there was a bat come out and hit me and hurt. And there was a Bible sitting right there. I grabbed that Bible and I pop. He went, <coughs> I ain't never seen another bat up in here. He said, oh, we ain't coming up in there because he, he beat folk with the word. <laughs> he beat folk with the word. We ain't going up in there. All right. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this opportunity to give. I ask you to bless the gift as well as the giver. As used for the purpose of grace. In the name of Jesus, we pray and all God's people said, amen. Let us stand all over the building and come and give our offering. For those of you who are watching and listening, Go ahead and give your best gift as well. You can go to our website at bishopyoung.com and or you can uh, cash app us at, w at uh, Fellowship World. That's hashtag F-E-L-L-O-W-S-H-I-P-W-O-R-L-D. All one word with the dollar sign in front of it. Amen. Don't forget about, don't forget about, amen, uh, Jackson Soul Food downstairs as well. Monday through Friday and you get your big boy and a big girl breakfast. Amen. Hey, hey, you. How you doing? How you doing? All right. Hey, get that breakfast going on Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. On the third Sunday, 
on the third Sunday, uh, which I believe is the 19th of February, uh, Bishop uh, Willie Davis and his congregation from Rochester, New York, will be here with us, the fellowship with us at the four o'clock hour. Amen. So we're looking forward to a high time with them. Now, it's not the group that we had the last time. They come in September. This is a new one. Amen. And we're, he's coming down to celebrate with us. Amen. All throughout the month of February, is Black History Month, you, you, y'all grab your African garb. I'm going to pull out my African robes. Praise the Lord. And we're going to look a little blackish up in here. All right. Throughout the month of February. Um, all right. Father, we bless you and we thank you for this opportunity and this privilege to be able to come and to worship you. We thank you for all your people who have come to hear, those who have watched and listened. I pray, oh God, that as we get ready to leave from this place, we're not dismissed from your presence, but kept in your care. In the name of Jesus, we pray. All of God's people said, amen. God bless you. Y'all have a great day on me.